If you even have a fraction of this knowledge, the hypocrisy is astounding. It will literally make you go f***ing crazy. All right, we're going to do how the CIA created a cocaine dictator. The war on drugs, a war that the United States demonstrably lost and drugs won. On the 20th of December, 1989, the United States launched its biggest military operation since the end of the Vietnam War. More than 25,000 soldiers poured into the small Central American Republic of Panama, supported by air power and a huge intelligence operation. On December the 20th last year, the Latin American Republic of Panama was being liberated. On paper, the invasion was about restoring democracy. In reality, this was a drugs bust, carried out to arrest one of America's most wanted traffickers. And this drug lord wasn't your typical on-the-run fugitive hiding out in the jungle. In fact, it was Manuel Noriega, the head of the Panamanian military and de facto ruler of the entire country. Noriega is responsible for the terror on our streets. And somewhat awkwardly for the US, Noriega had been a key American ally and a CIA intelligence asset so awkward. for decades. This is so awkward. How did that happen? <laughs> how did that happen, dude? What? This is how the Cold War met the war on drugs and how the CIA helped to create a cocaine dictator. Bro, I don't understand. The CIA is good though, like, right? They're the good guys in the movies that I watch. They're not the bad guys, it's... Panama is a relatively small country, and there's no particular reason why it should be considered a vital strategic interest to the US military, apart from one thing, the Panama Canal. About 5% of all global trade... I love when people still say, does the government not learn or do not care when this consistently happens? No, they're doing it so it happens. That's the difference. Like, it's... No, they're, they're intending on it. It is intentional. They're banking on it. Many such cases, they're doing it and they're doing it on purpose. That's the kind of the point. Through the canal, which tends to make the US sit up and pay attention. Throughout the 20th century, America ran the canal directly through a series of military bases here, here, and here. The United States is deeply engaged in the anti-communist struggle uh, in the competition with the Soviet Union. The United States was concerned that the Soviet Union was making a play for Latin America. Panama was a key player on the side of the United States. Manuel Noriega first came to work for the CIA all the way back in- It's so weird that like, historically, the people that the Soviets were siding with were literally the fucking good guys, straight up. And you can't really say that in most instances, and the people that the United States was siding with were literally the bad guys. Normally, I would stay away from making such broad claims. Normally, I would stay away from, uh, you know, uh, stating something like making a, a normative declar declaration like this, especially as it pertains to history. But straight the fuck up, straight the fuck up, especially in Latin America. Stay away. No, you wouldn't. No, I... I I, I think that like making normative declarations about uh, history with the exception of like chattel slavery being bad and Nazis being bad is is how you uh, often get into weird territory, okay? But with Latin American countries, uh, Soviet involvement, straight up not bad. In 1955. By the mid-1960s, he was receiving specialist training in intelligence and psychological warfare at the infamous School of the Americas where the US military trained many of Latin America's most prolific human rights abusers. More than 200 Latin American students hailing from 18 different nations study technical skills and leadership techniques at the school. After a coup in 1968, Noriega rose to become head of military intelligence. And this is when his career, both as a CIA spy the and- The debate lords on the way to Google Soviet atrocities in South America. Yeah, so they can come back with some hot takes from Wikipedia, dude. Drug trafficker, began to take off, with Noriega using his position to provide protection to drug shipments from South America. Essentially, he's taking money from drug traffickers to help them out. Uh, but at the same time, he's cooperating with the CIA, with military intelligence. He becomes more useful to the CIA and to the DIA, to military intelligence. Perhaps the most controversial question surrounding Noriega's involvement with US intelligence is how much the CIA knew about his drug trafficking and either chose to ignore it or actively protect him. This is particularly relevant to future president George H.W. Bush, 
who in the mid-1970s was head of the CIA. Sure, certainly he had no involvement with uh, the, the beginnings of any of these things that they're talking about when he was the head of the CIA. Of course, certainly, certainly not. Never ask a woman her age, a man his salary, or George H.W. Bush where he was on the day that JFK was assassinated. <laughs> Bush, I said Bush. I, to be fair, I don't even know. I, I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, but also, he, neither does George H.W. Bush if you ask him. Rather, what part of Dallas he was in, he doesn't remember. What part of the grassy knoll he was in, he just can't make up his mind on. What, what part? Where was he when, when you know, JFK's brain was splattering? Where was he? Where, what was he doing? It will be classified in 20 years? No shot, dude. It, that will never... <laughs> I don't even know if it's, is it true or not, but that, that definitely will never be declassified, even if it was true, okay? Trump knew JFK Cruz's dad line attack was meant for Jeb? Oh my God. Are you fucking serious? Pretty sure he was in the Falklands during that? No, dude. George W. Bush was in Dallas. Uh... His drug trafficking was not a mystery. Tabura had briefed Mr. George Bush of the Central Intelligence Agency on the reaction of Cuban exiles in Miami to the assassination. Also quoted an identified source with close connections to the intelligence community as saying Mr. Bush started working for an agency in the 1960s or 61 using his oil business as a cover for clandestine activities. To the CIA. The CIA was working with many people in, the, in Central America in this period who were involved in drug trafficking. The same people who were transporting guns on our behalf in many cases were also transporting cocaine. George Bush in 1976 is head of the CIA. Noriega actually goes to meet with Bush in Washington around this period. Noriega's involvement in drugs was serious enough that as early as 1972, the Nixon White House actually considered assassinating him. But he was considered so essential by the CIA and the Pentagon that the plan was never carried out. And awkwardly enough for George Bush's later claims of ignorance, in 1976, the CIA actually put Noriega on a regular annual salary that eventually rose to over $200,000 a year, the head of the CIA at the time being George Bush. Then, in 1983, Noriega took full control as de facto dictator of Panama. Noriega went straight into business with the rising Colombian cartels, giving them landing strips for their cocaine shipments at upwards of 100 grand per flight. Did drugs get transported in his aircraft through this deal that you arranged? I'm not talking about George W. Bush on 9-11. I'm talking about George H. W. Bush on the day that JFK died, was assassinated. Uh, we set up a deal that ended up in a drug shipment. When Pablo Escobar murdered the Colombian Minister of Justice in 1984 and had to go on the run, it was Noriega's Panama that offered him shelter. At the same time, Noriega was keeping up his contacts with the American intelligence agencies. Any drug trafficker who didn't pay could be reported to the DEA, effectively making them the muscle of Noriega's narco protection racket. Some uh, TOS here. And Noriega wasn't just cashing in on the cocaine flowing north to the US. For decades, America had encouraged Panama to resist communism by becoming the Switzerland of Central America, establishing a strong banking sector with extremely strict privacy laws. So sick. This, of course, was very handy for drug cartels needing to launder money. And plane loads of cash began flying in from Miami, with Noriega providing protection until the money could disappear. Seems like we only did good things in South America. I don't know what this fucking Brit is talking about, dude. I, I, I don't get it. I mean, it seems like what? Uh, sorry, sweaty. You just, it seems like you don't like it when brown people get to do banking for themselves. Mm, you just want them to be over-reliant on the Western uh, developed nations. Fucked up. Mm, wow. Here you are. Here you are talking shit about... America uplifting brown voices and uh, and upholding Four more years. Uh, Four more years. you know the industrial capacity of of Latin American nations. I think to the opaque Panamanian Latinx system. Latinx the money laundering is swimming in a sea of money, <laughs> money that filters back into the legitimate economy. The real money starts pouring in. The cartels in Colombia are now very active. Ye -ye, Drug trafficking is going out of control. Billions of dollars are being produced 
by the cartels and Noriega. It is really funny to think like, I mean, a lot of people are completely oblivious to this stuff. It's always funny to think like, uh, you know, that America has any say on the planet. Like America has any sort of like moral grandstanding. Like that they have any room to be like, wow, it's so fucked up how these other countries are doing stuff. It's like, dude, are, are you serious? If you even have a fraction of this knowledge, it's like it, it the hypocrisy is astounding. It will literally make you go fucking crazy, okay? That is offered a chunk of that. Noriega was able to keep getting away with all this throughout almost the entire 1980s, partially because the Reagan administration was supporting right-wing rebels known as the Contras, as they fought a bloody civil war in Nicaragua. Congress had made support- Yeah, oh. Wait, what? Congress made supporting the, the Contras illegal? Hold yet. on. You mean to tell me America was arming and training yet another genocidal group of hyper right wing ultra nationalist paramilitaries? Wait, stop. That would never happen. And also, that would be illegal. Wait, you mean to tell me that the Congress made it illegal and yet they still continue to do it? This does not seem similar to anything that is going on at all why are they doing russian propaganda i mean fuck i why are they doing nicaraguan propaganda that's weird i can't place my finger on exactly what this uh, is is similar to that is prescient and uh, is happening currently fuck I, what you mean to tell me that like wait hold on let me just run that again let me just uh, play with all this throughout almost the second. entire what? 1980s Partially because the Reagan administration was supporting right-wing rebels known as the Contras, as they fought a bloody civil war in Nicaragua. Congress had made supporting the Contras illegal, so this all had to be done off the books. Wait, stop. What? No, dude. That's fucking bullshit. That's crazy. That's not serious. That's... That's such unseriousness, dude. What? There's no way. No way. No way. Um, what? Even the Guardian writing about it? They say Azov fighters are Ukraine's greatest weapon and maybe its greatest threat. The battalion's far right volunteers' desire to bring the fight to Kiev is dangerous. Post conflict stability. Yeah. Wait, no way. No shot. When I say that, I'm a fucking Russian propagandist. Uh, so, crazy. At Hussein Shit, Ali, dude. Have you ever done coke? I have. And that's when Noriega came in. He was providing intelligence. That's number one. Number two was arms shipments. So, between the booming cocaine trade and clandestine military supply chains, how did it all come crashing down? In the early 80s, an opponent of Noriega's in Panama named Hugo Spadafora made a series of very public accusations about Noriega's drug trafficking activities. The military seized Badafora, and a day later, his tortured and decapitated body was discovered. But what probably brought down Noriega was more that he'd simply outlived his usefulness. The Cold War was winding down, and the American defense establishment was getting less paranoid about communists and more twitchy about drug cartels. If we can't take Noriega with the power that we have in the area, how are we going to deal with the drug lords in Mexico, in Colombia, in Bolivia, and when are we really going to take on that war? In 1988, Noriega was indicted in a Miami court on multiple drug trafficking charges. During his election campaign, George Bush had been questioned about his CIA links with Noriega. But that didn't stop him from winning the presidency a year later. I mean, anybody who sits there and does nothing and says he didn't know that Noriega was doing drugs and running drugs and a suspected murderer, in my judgment, doesn't have what it takes to lead this country. In his first TV address as president, Bush held up a bag of crack and declared a major escalation in the war on drugs, claiming it was a just- The same energy of the crack cocaine sentencing disparity was literally the same energy why George W. George w. Bush was able to wipe his fucking dick on the floor with Dukakis, by the way, famously. Uh, the Willie Horton ad, and this might come as a surprise to you, but it's just specifically because of, specifically because of, and you might have guessed this already, uh, white supremacy. That's the most powerful fucking way that you can win votes in the United States of America. Okay? It's cause. Victory over drugs is our cause, a just cause. And with your help, we are going to win. And I'm not overly subtle. What's Oliver North doing right now? Um... For a brief stint, he was the head of the NRA. For instance, to Bush's drug policy speech, the invasion was called Operation Just Cause. 
Noriega was the intelligence hub in, in Central America. He knew where the bodies were buried on all sides. He knows what the CIA is doing and all of the dirty work that we are participating in. The interesting thing is that he never uses that information. Over 500 Panamanians died in this drugs bust, along with 23 US soldiers. Noriega tried to claim diplomatic asylum in the Vatican Embassy in Panama, but US troops surrounded it and blasted Van Halen songs until he couldn't take any more and surrendered. Huh? He's a fugitive drug dealer, uh, and we want to see him brought to justice. And if that helps, if there's some incentive for some Panamanian to turn him in, that's a very million bucks that I would be very happy to uh, sign the check for, yes. The potential for embarrassment is high, with the defense team promising revelations of CIA involvement in the murky world of international drug smuggling and gun running. Noriega was flown to Miami, stood trial on the drug charges, and was sentenced to 40 years. He served 17 before being extradited to a prison term in France and then to another in Panama before dying in 2017. For all the bullets fired, people killed, and billions spent on the war on drugs since Noriega was sent to prison, the drug trade has only increased, and the people who run it have only got richer. We'd like to congratulate drugs for winning the war on drugs. Crazy.